This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Got to turn the lights up just a little bit here. You know what? Shout out to the Dallas Cowboys this morning because, you know, I went to bed late last night after we signed uh, John Phillips. Defensive tackle, of course, getting extra content and stuff out and things, which was great. Went to bed saying, oh, my God, the Cowboys have actually made a move. And before we even had a chance to talk about that, I had my man Clarence this morning call me at like 745 because I'm still on West Coast time. I'm still jet lagged. See, my body right now at this moment is telling me that it's not 11 o'clock. No, it's telling me that it is nine o'clock. No, eight o'clock. It's telling me it's eight o'clock right now. So I was dead to the world, and he called me and said, the Cowboy has signed Carl Lawson. And I was like, oh, my God, wow. And I was in such a you know, state of confusion. I was like, who? Carl, who's Carl Lawson? I, who? And he was like, dude, what the hell? I was like, oh, slapped myself in the face and woke up. But Carl Lawson. And, you know, last night when I went to bed, of course, um, people now are saying, see, Mozzie Smith sucks. That's why the Cowboys went ahead and got uh, Jonathan Phillips, okay? And, and we've heard some things about Jonathan Phillips, who is a veteran. He is a veteran who had played really well for the Bills, was there in New York, and they said that he just didn't seem like he was really putting his foot on the gas pedal. And so that may be because he's looking at it and saying, damn, I went from the Buffalo Bills that was a playoff team and everything else, and he's looking at the Giants and saying, they're ass-ass. I want you to think about when Joe Looney, Joe Looney signed with them, remember? Joe Looney, he went there, and after being there about a week or two, he literally was like, I'm retired. I I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. So maybe Jonathan Phillips for him, it was like, why am I going to kill myself? This is just a paycheck. This team ain't going nowhere. And they said that the younger guys were, you know, of course, running around like young people do, you know, and everything else and putting in all kinds of work. And he was just kind of like taking it easy. And I can understand that to a point if it was on a bad team. Now, maybe, and this is my hope, that he gets to the Cowboys and sees, hey, I got to fight for this roster spot. I got to fight for, for playing time and things. Now, people outside the building have gone through and said oh this says more about mozzie than it does you know that mozzie's still a bust that he he's just not cutting it well i'm gonna look at it like this mozzie they have taken him and his body that was really a one technique now what i want you to understand when i say one technique that means you line up over the center most time or you shade a little left you shade a little to the right but most time you're in the middle and you want a really big guy with a lot of weight on him that can clog up the middle. John Phillips is more of a one technique guy. Mozzie, with the loss of about 25 pounds and using his hands and things like that, now becomes a three technique guy. He's playing more three technique. He knows how to play one, but he's now got a body that's better for a heavy three technique. And what you people fail to understand is what has happened in front of our eyes. Now, you know, ESPN is going to go through and say, the Cowboys, they let go great players. You know, Dorrance Armstrong, who's gone off to Washington, of course, with Dan Quinn. Dante Fowler, you know, a, a great players. But see, the thing is, it's not, maybe it was the Joneses were cheap. But what it may also be is that the Cowboys, by signing um, Carl Lawson, by signing John Phillips and getting Mozzie Smith to lose weight, that there's a plan here with Mike Zimmer. See, understand what Dan Quinn likes is he likes length. He likes taller guys that are leaner and faster and typically lighter. He's not worried about them holding up the line. He's worried about them getting upfield right now. He wants guys that can shoot the gap or use their speed to get past the offensive lineman to get penetration upfield. And see, this is the problem with the Cowboys was we had a lot of guys that were light in the ass. So when you have a guy that's like Dorrance Armstrong, let's take Dorrance Armstrong, for example. 
Dorrance Armstrong, six foot four, two fifty five. Six foot four, taller guy, two fifty five. Carl Lawson, six foot two, two sixty five. He's ten pounds heavier and two inches shorter. So he's a little lower to the ground and he's stockier. Okay? And when you start looking at what Dan Quinn with his interior defensive lineman, he likes smaller guys. He never liked the big Quentin Bohannon. He didn't like the John Ridgeway. And I don't think he liked Mozzie Smith too much either because he wanted guys that were fast and could get up field. That was his philosophy. What we see with Mike Zimmer is he likes his guys to be big, strong, immovable forces. And if you think, because here's where people are like, oh, man, Mozzie, he going to get cut. He just a bust. I, I want you to understand this. When you start looking at the Cowboys depth chart, and right now, Jordan, uh, uh, Jonathan, uh, Jordan Phillips, like, I'm sorry, I'm saying Jonathan, Jordan Phillips is scheduled as second team behind Mozzie Smith. He's an insurance policy, and he's also a guy that can spell the big man as well. Understand behind Mozzie Smith before, I mean, you know, at, at currently was Carl Davis Jr., okay? Um, very little experience, and Justin Rogers. At right defensive tackle, you have Osa and Digazua, who's a little bit lighter, very good, but then you got Semi Fioco, who seemed like he was kicked around a lot, he was moved off the block a lot. And then you got Danzel, Daxon, and Albert Higgins, who is the four-string guy right now, who might be having a hard way to stay on the team because of the boneheaded move he made in practice. He may become the sacrificial lamb. So what you're seeing is, is the evolution of this defense. And believe me, when uh, the 49ers go out and sign, um, damn, what's his name? Uh, with the H. Uh, last year, uh, Hargrave. They didn't say, oh, man, uh, our Eric Armstead, that means he's a bust. They're going to really cut him. No. They wanted multiple guys that were good on the defensive front. I feel better that we have another big body in there. I feel great because you could go with the three-man defensive line setup that is a heavy package. To me, this says that the Dallas Cowboys have finally recognized they've dissected the body and they realize that with Mike Zimmer as a coach, <coughs> we need to get players that fit his system that are bigger, stronger, more physical. We need linebackers that can fly to the ball, that can support it. And back to Mozzie, because I'm going to tell you guys, everybody out there who's looked at that play, interior run, and look and say, Mozzie sucks, doesn't know dick about the defensive line and defense at all. Mozzie did exactly what he was supposed to do, and that is control the line of scrimmage, hold your man up, don't give any ground, and take care of your gap. It was your linebacker, Harvey, who had the perfect shot, was literally in the hole where they were running, who should have filled and made the tackle. Yet everybody's out here busted on Mozzie Smith. Understand football. Before you comment and assume something that you see, understand the whole philosophy. Don't be that guy that doesn't understand it, Philly 500. Don't be that guy. So for me, I feel... 100% better about the defense in the last 24 hours than before. And I looked at it and I said, I believe that the Dallas Cowboys defense is going to be better. So between seeing Diggs out there getting an interception from Jimmy Garoppolo, seeing the Cowboys get some more beef in the middle, see the Cowboys get another veteran defensive end, you know, these are the kind of moves that people aren't excited about. But these are the kind of moves that seem to be kind of quiet that end up being good ones for the Cowboys. You think about when the Cowboys sign a guy like Malik Hooker, who 
at the time was coming back from a you know Achilles tear, I believe it was. And he's been on the roster now his fourth year. And he has been really, really good. And so, you know, when we think about Dorrance Armstrong, that people were opining that we didn't sign him. Well, guess what? Nobody thought Dorrance Armstrong was going to be any good when we lost Randy Gregory. And so maybe these type moves will help the team. Now, I, I hope that the Cowboys aren't finished. I hope they're not finished. I would like to have, you know, Rico is looking, you know, pretty good right now. Zeke is going to be your short yards guy. But I wouldn't mind adding another running back. I wouldn't mind adding another offensive lineman for some more depth and things to get a really good swing tackle. You know, um, you can always add more. You know, if you got a guy who's good that's sitting on the bench waiting, I'm okay with that. We need more of that. And so let's, uh, since this morning I didn't do this, let's listen to Kimberly Martin and crew that are going to be trashing the Cowboys as always. Uh, meanwhile, D Wood, let's go to the Cowboys. Are they going to get CD and Dak signed before the season starts? You both? Say and? both of them? You said and? Both? Oh, both? I said and. No, we're not doing both of them. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Listen, they need CD. They want to get CD. But Dak, but Dak is a fool to sign a contract right now when you're months away from unrestricted free agency. So the answer is no. Okay, well, we have been waiting a long time because when we think of the Cowboys, let me tell you this. I walked into about 40 NBA, well, there aren't 40. I, I walked into about 25 NBA arenas with Stephen A. Smith over the years that I was doing the NBA. And in NBA arenas, they yell cowboys at him, okay? So everyone in America was waiting for Steve to come back yesterday from vacation and offer his thoughts on Jerry Jones and his definition of the term all in. And Stephen A. did not disappoint. Did it ever occur to anybody that the time has arrived Here we where go. we could legitimately ask, what is Jerry Jones' definition of winning? Is it headlines? Is it that you're worth $10 billion? Is it that you're winning back pages? When you look at the Cowboys, because of the quote unquote mismanagement, it appears to make no sense, unless if you're Jerry Jones, and they talking about my Cowboys, then that pub does make sense. That might be, one could legitimately ask, and that's my buddy, but I could look him in the face and ask him to his face, is your definition of a championship winning headlines? Because at this point, that's what appears to be the case. It's an interesting take. Mm -hmm. D, what is it fair? It's absolutely fair. Green and we talked about on the show about the Dallas Cowboys and the fact they've gone 12 and five, three straight years, but they're spending. Which it's like at the bottom of the league. Yes. Like if you're, if we like, when we talk about all in, I look at, okay, what are you, some of your competitors doing all in? We saw what the San Francisco 49ers did when they traded for Christian McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. Would you quantify that as an all-in? All-in, absolutely. Okay, what about the Philadelphia Eagles when they traded for A.J. Brown mm -hmm. and then they signed Saquon Barkley this offseason? Would you quantify those moves as all-in? All-in. And what? And so what are the Dallas Cowboys doing, you know, to try to combat what those rivals in the NFC are doing? Nothing. That, mm -hmm. to me, yeah. bring, that's why I, I agree with Stephen A. 100% in this. We got to start thinking, like, what is Jerry Jones, like, all in, really? Because as a marketer, that dude is the absolute goat at marketing the brand of the Dallas Cowboys. But if we're talking strictly on the football field, can we honestly sit here and say that the Dallas Cowboys are all in no, they're to winning a championship? No, they're underachievers. Because the Chiefs have the same amount of wins, basically, in the same t uh, time frame. That you're talking about the 12 and 5, and yet we're looking at two Super Bowls in that time. Three. Three, excuse me. So when I think of the Cowboys, all I see is underachievement. And, it, and I know people want to talk about Dak. Oh, he's not a dog. Oh, blah, blah, blah. how are they going to win with him? We've been waiting for the Cowboys to get back to the relevancy that we knew from the 90s. That's 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. We have football fans that, that now are alive and haven't even seen when Shemit and... and, oh, and fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of Shut Fuck Mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. There you have it. How about that one? Okay, so let, let me say something here because you could look and say that the New York Jets were all in last year. 
All in last year. How did that work out last year? How did it work out? You could say they're all in this year again with Aaron Rodgers. You could say that the Denver Broncos were all in a couple years ago, and now they're at the point of rebuilding again. Here's the thing. There's a lot of teams that are going all in and go in and, and so forth that are trying to do everything they can to win a Super Bowl. I'm going to say I think the Cowboys are trying to. They just look at it as a different way to do it. Because I got to say, some of these teams that have been all in, the Jets have been trying to get back to the playoffs. I think they've got the longest playoff drought than anybody else right now. It ain't from a lack of trying. And I still look at it and say the Cowboys, regardless of what you hear from these people, are, you know, quite frankly, they don't know anything more than we do. And they've already gone through and fit literally just say the Cowboys are going to suck, which they do every year. And guess what? Cowboys will be a playoff team. That much I can guarantee you. Mozzie, I stand behind what I said. Mozzie is going to be really, really good this year. And you're seeing the evolution of what they're doing with him. They're taking what he was in college and they are um, tweaking it for him to become a great three technique guy and bringing in um, Phillips is going to be kind of like the Hankins role, a little bit younger, a big body that they can plug in the middle. And now you've got more depth on the defensive front and Carl Lawson. I I love that. I, I, we definitely needed more help in there. And these are moves that don't preclude you from being able to make other moves. So we'll see, and there's no guarantee on any of them. All right, good people, as always, shout out to BetUS, and definitely check them out because if you are a gambler, and I am, I've gotten my account set up, and I'm going to start doing some, some wagers. I'm going to start taking some over and unders, and I can't wait till the regular season gets here so we can try to, well, basically, I'm going to go ahead and bet on the Cowboys every week, and we're going to see how that works. Definitely check out BetUS where you get... 125 percent matchings 125 percent up to two thousand dollars three times that gives you a whole lot more money to play with as always i appreciate you guys and i will see you soon peace